Hello, everyone. I'm Yuchun Liu from Georgia Tech. Today, I will present my research work about the blockage robust multi access point association mechanism in millimeter wave wireless line. Okay, let's get started. As the Varroa span with hungry applications emerge, the high data rate demands have pushed both academia and industry to pursue the revolutionary wireless technologies. To meet such high performance requirements, utilizing ultra high frequency for communication becomes a necessary solution. Particularly, the millimeter bands have received a considerable attention because of the huge bandwidth. So operating on millimeter wave frequency band has many typical merits, such as the tremendous spectrum availability. A large amount of antenna arrays can be packed in a small physical dimension and the limited interference. However, everything has pros and cons, and the two main challenges must be overcome before its full realization. The first challenge is the higher pass loss, while the relaying and beamforming techniques can be used to help extend the coverage. In addition, another challenge is the sensitivity of blockage effects, which makes millimeter wave links easily blocked by the real world obstacles. And this becomes a more significant concern for the coverage of network systems, especially in wireless line scenarios. So we need to rethink about the robust techniques to overcome the potential blockages. Consider a millimeter wave wireless line indoor scenario where multiple access points are deployed to improve the network coverage. And in our prior work, we have studied the line offset optimal access point placement methods, which make use of the information of furniture tap obstacle like their locations, dimensions, etc., and then produce the optimal access point placement, which can also achieve the full coverage operations with a few number of access points. So after well handling the fixed obstacle, we find a good matching between access points and clients is critical to further improve network performance and robustness. So it's necessary to design a blockage robust association mechanism accounting for not only fixed obstacle, but also moving obstacle like humans and the client mobility effects, such that we can make all users have consistent and gigabits per second network services in wireless line. Through a detailed study on related works, we found that in current standardized work, the access point association process is mainly based on the highest received signal strength. However, for other non-standardized works, unfortunately, they mainly focus on maximizing either instant network throughput or access point utilization without considering blockage robustness. To avoid blockages as much as possible, one straightforward solution is to have users selecting different access points based on probing the channel conditions dynamically. However, this dynamic approach can incur a large problem overhead. So from the perspective of robustness, we should consider the new metrics that are critical to millimeter wave wireless line, like the link re reliability, access point load utilization, and the computational overhead. Now, let me introduce our schemes in details. First, we make use of pre-computed backup pass, which eliminates frequent beam searching mechanism when blockage occurs, because we find that's a time consuming process, which may even take up to a, a few seconds. So here we adopt a dual connectivity mode where each client will associate one primary and one backup access point. And with the efficient beam tracking mechanism like showing this figure, when the primary link is blocked, the fast access point switching operation is performed to the backup link when blockage occurs. In this way, the link connectivity can be efficiently maintained with a smaller overhead. Next, to derive the new metric as indicator for access point association. Firstly, we derive the analytical model to quantify the blockage effects caused by uh, moving obstacles. Basically, the problem is 
assuming the network with our optimal access point planning and based on the dual connectivity mode, find a pair of access points with maximal moving obstacle tolerance, or we say MOT for short. In this example, we quantify MOT of two line offset links for a client. Consider a random located obstacle in the figure. We find that the blockage area is determined by the location and the dimension of the obstacle. For example, if the center of this obstacle falls in the green area S2, the link between the access point two and the client will be blocked. And both link will be blocked if the obstacle falls in the pink area as shown in the figure. Then through the intensive derivation in a 3D blockage model, finally, we arrive at the probability that at least one of line offset link is survival in this closed form formula. And this link survival probability is the performance index of moving obstacle tolerance. Next, to handle the client mobility effects, we propose a discrete analytical model to quantify the self-mobility tolerance. In general, we quantify the CMT accounting for both fixed and moving obstacle effects. Here we consider two cases. First, to quantify CMT with no knowledge of user mobility, based on a grid-based search algorithm, we can efficiently find the shadowed grid SG caused by fixed obstacle in terms of different access points. Then, assisted by this shadowy region map, we incorporate the moving obstacle effects at each non-shadowed grid. And finally, we arrive at the metric on the right side, which is considered as a performance index of CMT. And for the second case that if we have the prior knowledge of mobility pattern of the clients, we can make a mobility pattern map for each client. And then, incorporate this information in the model such that an extended formula is derived on the right hand. Well, in the end, we arrive at a novel metric which is called a, a, the, the robustness index that considers moving obstacle, fixed obstacle, and the client mobility effects. And with this metric, we have built the bridge between the physical environment and the network robustness in millimeter wave wireless line. So based on this, the blockage robust association mechanism is designed with an HRS algorithm. Generally, there are five steps. The first thing is for access points to collect the line offset status with different client. And then we compute the robustness index based on our derived model. Next, we search the best access point pair as candidate. After that, we did a load balancing procedure. And here an optimization problem is formulated to minimize the maximum of traffic loads assigned to an access point. After transforming it into a mixed integer linear programming, we got the solution with the branch and bound method. Then the network controller can assign the right access points for each client. Besides, we, we also propose a, another, I mean, an alternative algorithm which aims to ensure the desired load balancing performance. Due to the time limitation, please re refer to our paper for details about this scheme. Okay, to summarize the design, we, here we have um, several derived optimal schemes in terms of different prior knowledge algorithms and the main requirements. So we have two extended schemes such as MRI and P, which incorporates the mobility information of users. And AMRI is the one to prioritize the load balancing performance. So these different schemes can adapt to various conditions and the network scenarios. Okay, now let's see some evaluations with proposed association mechanism in wireless line. First, we evaluate the network blockage tolerance and versus the uh, um, client density in the first figure. And the network BTR in Y axis represents the uh, percentage of invalidated moments in which all clients have line offset connections out of all invalidated moments. Clearly, it's observed that the dynamic probing approach, I mean, PropCon here gives the best 
possible blockage tolerance since it props the channel conditions before every transmission, which could always associate each client to the best access point. Well, in fact, our static approach is nearly as good in blockage tolerance, where the performance gap is just less than 4%. But as we show later, since we don't incur any probing overhead, our schemes will offer the better performance in other important dimensions. Besides the blockage tolerance, as shown in the second figure, we also evaluate the average line of set time percentage. And we also uh, see the proposed approach provide nearly a perfect line of set connection for users and also close to the performance um, provided by dynamic probing scheme. One interesting thing to note here is if, if we focus on the performance comparison among our different derived schemes, we find that having the knowledge of mobility patterns will provide additional performance gains. For, for example, the MRI MP scheme outperforms the pure MRI schemes, which are not taking the user mobility information into account. Then let's see the throughput performance evaluation. Here we evaluate the average user throughput versus the, uh, both uh, client density and the user mobility factor. From the left figure, we observe that our scheme maintain higher user throughput than other, the other approaches. In particular, as I mentioned earlier, compared to the dynamic probing approach, the throughput can be improved by around 6% with our MRI scheme and more than 10% improvement when we incorporate the user mobility information in our scheme. Although we compromise a little performance on the uh, blockage tolerance as compared to the dynamic probing approach, but our static mechanism um, eliminates the overhead for dynamically probing the channel condition every time. In specific, a fixed overhead of 2% is applied to every transmission for dynamic approach. But in our scheme, the overhead of beam tracking and the switching between primary and alternative links is just up to 0.7%. And in the, in the case when the client is stationary or a line of set connection to the current access point is maintained, there is even no overhead added. Therefore, the detailed analysis of the environment and the smaller overhead make our approach produce significantly better throughput performance. For the second figure here, we also evaluate the throughput versus the client mobility factor. The larger factor indicates our clients tend to be moved more frequently. So here we observe that our scheme can still maintain much higher user throughput even in a highly dynamic scenario, especially um, for the MRI MP scheme, which incorporates the mobility patterns of clients. Okay, for some secondary um, benefits, uh, like the load balancing performance, uh, as, as we see in the figure, L max in the Y axis here denotes the maximum load on an access point. And the higher L max, the worse load balancing. So it's clear to see our method provides better load balancing among access points since we consider the global access point in our design, global access point load in our design. So until now, we achieved the requirements we mentioned earlier, like the reliable <coughs> connection, very good load balancing and the much lower overhead since we do computation in a static manner. Finally, let's see the evaluation on the fairness. Uh, from this figure, we can see that with our solution blue bars, almost all clients receive an equal share of the wireless channel occupancy time, which means everyone can have a high rate network experience. So finally, we achieved the goal mentioned earlier in this presentation, I mean, making all clients have consistent and reliable gigabits per second network experience. Okay, to conclude this work, we provide our robust solution in millimeter wave wireless lines. And in doing so, we overcome all these challenges brought by the hostile environment. Okay, that's all. Thanks very much for your listening.